It's a bright and early morning. Good morning and good afternoon to you or good evening. This is Websites for Beginners with JP and Brizzy, Reconstructed Episode 02. And in Episode 2, we are going to be creating this Euro block. A few things that we're going to do differently as we build up our skill within the Brizzy Builder. First of all, we're going to be working with columns today, and I'm going to show you a complete different way of approaching building out a block and getting everything aligned to the left instead of maybe using something like padding. I'll explain that later. We'll also be working with the line element, and I think that's about it for elements, and then we'll bring in a shape divider here at the bottom. That gives us that nice little tainted look in the back. And let's go and view it on the front end so you have a good idea of how it looks. Entrance animation as well. And there's also a little bit of a hover effect applied. This is very nice. This is very clean, minimalistic design at its best. And then we flip it all over and we make it something stunning, spectacular, glamorous, baby. And we'll do that by bringing in an image. You'll see I've also applied a little bit of a shape divider to the top, not only the bottom. And note that we have this dark area here on the left and it transitions into the full image on the right. That I did with a gradient that I've applied as an overlay within the block. So I'll show you how to do all of that right here, right now. Let's close this one and then I'm going to open up the one that we'll be working on, which is Recon Brizzy. And that stands for Reconstructed. I keep wanting to say Reconnaissance. Let's keep this tab here all the way to the right that we don't get lost. I have two other tabs open, my Lorem Ipsum generator at lorumipsum.io, just to give us an abundance of text that we have no idea what it means. Next to that, I have something called flatuicolors.com. And this is what I often use when I'm designing very nice nifty online little tool that you can use. They've got all these different flat palettes that you can choose from. And the one that I chose for this one, I think is the British palette over here. Good. And this is what we'll be using during this tutorial. In Brizzy, quickly just a note on the versions we are using. The reason I want to quickly have a look at that is because version 2.3 is out in the demo world. And one of the things that I mentioned in Reconstructed Episode 1 is actually implemented in the 2.3, and that is going to give us uppercase. So when you have small little letters, you want to put it in big letters, that's uppercase feature. Uppercase means we put all of the letters in the big letters. Right, so we're working here with Brizzy Free in 2.2.17, and then Brizzy Pro with 2.2.11. And then the demo that you can currently test if you're a Brizzy Pro license holder and you've signed up for the demo beta testing, that is 2.3. We'll see that anytime in the near future. From the sidebar on the left in the navigation panel, go to pages and we'll select add new. We create a new page and I'll call this a Recon 02. Publish this page and immediately jump within the busy, busy builder. Let's begin. Where shall we start? First, we bring in a new block, start building your page, and we'll start from scratch, create your own. And then I think let's start by changing the background color. To change the color, I first will go and grab the color code that I will be using. Now from my color palette over here, you have this drop down feature up here that gives you the hex and another hex. Now you will see the one copies the hex with the hash and the other one copies the hex without the hash. In Brizzy, the hash is often already there. If you select everything, it won't select the hash. So what I'm going to do is just put it on this one so it doesn't select the hash. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but it's just I found it works better in Brizzy for me when I use this color palette not to copy the hash, then I don't have to remove the hash every time. Nothing really big has changed. Pico Void, this nice navy dark blue copy. And we go into Recon 02. To access the block settings, hover over the block, 
settings up here in the top right, click on it and all the way here to overlay. And down here is where we enter our hex. So you see the hash is there and how I usually select my code within this little box here is I simply double click and you see what happens? It selects the number without the hash. If you wanted to select the hash, I think it's a triple click, one, two, three, there you go. But I'm so used to double click and that's why I do not select this one with the hash. Does it make sense? I hope. Let's do that again, double click and I'll paste my color, control command V and there it brings in that nice little blue. We can see it over here. And this is where we're going to start it all out. In the previous tutorial, we had worked only with the block, no other containers. And I always explain containers as something that keeps something else in. They don't really have content themselves. They just act as a box, as a framework for other content. This block that we have here with the blue is a container. It keeps all the content inside and it structures your page. The most common container that you'll be using in Brizzy is the columns container. And it's also an element, so you bring it from the elements drawer. To do that, you can click here, plus, and it opens the elements drawer. Click outside to close it, or go up here to the top left, click on add elements. These guys at the top are the content elements. They are going to give you everything in terms of content, and then you have a few ones that can help you with your structure. And then under grid, we have a row as well as a column element. The row one, also very useful, but we'll just be working with the column element in this tutorial. To get it onto your page, click, hold and drag, and then drop it on the block. Let's click outside to close the drawer and see what we've got. What we've got are two columns. Hover over the left, you see the blue bounding box and hover over the right, exactly the same thing. These are columns and they are containers. You can see we have that blue little icon with the plus again, showing us that we can bring content inside it. If I click, my elements drawer opens up again. Let me show you a bit how these columns work. You can have up to six columns within your block. And to access the options of the columns, you hover over the columns, and then you go to this little bubble up here in the top right, click on it, and it gives you the context toolbar for the columns. Over here, you can see it's a duplicate, and over here you can see is add new column. Let's just add a new column, and I'll click once, twice, thrice, and then a fourth time, and then, the plus disappears. Because in Brizzy, you can only add six columns next to each other, no more than that. There's a few sneaky workarounds, how you can get more in there. We're not gonna work on that at this moment. To delete a column, simply do the same thing again. Let's choose a different column, this one here. Go to the top, select it, and then you see the trash can over here. Click on delete. Again, to speed things up, and I know it's very difficult for a lot of people, especially my father, you can also use the right-click function on your mouse. As I hover over this column, right-click, and you'll see delete down here. And I often do that. So I'm right-clicking and deleting, and we go back to two columns. Can we only have one column? Well, sure, Nigel, one column as well. And that's often a very good idea just to put things within a container so you have more control over it. Let's delete this container, this column, and now we only have one column and we know, yes, because there is a blue bounding box. Can we delete this one? Of course, because that's how we started at the very beginning with only a container. So you can add an element like we did last time. Let's bring in a text element, click, hold and drag to just the block with no column. But in most cases, you're almost never going to do that because you limit yourself in terms of a lot of flexibility and control, especially when you go to tablet and mobile design. So it's a good idea, even though you can do it like we did in the first episode, 
rather always use a column or you can even use that row one that I had showed you at the beginning. Do you remember how to undo this? Two ways, you can go to the bottom here on the toolbar and click here on undo or the shortcut key command Z on a Mac, control Z on Windows and we are back here. Let's do this all again. Click here on add elements, scroll down, grid, column, click, hold, drag, and drop. And we've got our two columns. Let's just go back to the demo I made at the beginning and I'll open the preview for you. Remember what we want to achieve is to have all our content on the left and the right open. And this is especially useful if we have an image like this, where the focus point of the image is only on one side, like in this case on the right. It could be on the left, but this image on the right. So we want all the content on the left. And I mentioned to you, there are quite a number of ways you can do it. Often we add padding with size of boxes, etc. But here I'm going to show you how we will achieve this, well, this, with using the two columns. And think a moment what I'm gonna do. Naturally, I'm just going to put everything in this column, my content, my text, my line, and my button. And this column, we're just going to keep it empty. As simple as that. That's the logic behind it. But where this logic is going to become super duper is when we go to tablet and mobile and we can grab this handle here in the middle and drag the width of the column easily to match the display. Let's first work on our styling and I'm going to build out my content very quickly. So if you look here and you've did a wireframe mock-up before the time or any kind of mock-up, we have a buff title, then we have our main heading, we have a line, then we have a little bit of a tagline here and a button and over here we have space. So I have text element, text element, line element, text element, space element and button. What I do when I have designed it already like this and I've done a mock-up is I just drag those elements immediately onto my page, like so. Go to plus, above title, then I grab my main heading, then I'll have a line and here is the line. I'll have a tagline, another text element. And you see, I look for that gray line where I drag it every time below the other one, and then a spacer over here. And finally, we'll have a button. And now I've got all the elements onto my page that I'm going to use. And I can simply go ahead and make changes to the content. I wanna tell you, I actually get a little bit of goosebumps when I work like this with Brizzy, because honestly, in terms of ease of design, there isn't anything on the market like Brizzy right? In terms of just joy of usage in building it out very quickly, Brizzy is at the front for me with this. Let's go to the first little element up here and you can see those little dotted lines across it. Select it and it gives us our toolbar. And the first thing I'll do is just change the color. Notice I didn't select anything. I just clicked in it, toolbar, go to color, and I have this white here all the way to the right. And it changes to white. So you can see that you can make changes without selecting the text, simply click on it. But if we want to change the text, we have to select it. Triple click or control command A, one, two, three. And I'll type in capitals, lorem ipsum dollar. Remember, we don't have uppercase, so you have to type in caps, but this is something that they promise in 2.3. Now we can change out our Topography, the font. Click here on T for Topography. And this time I want to work with a font called Work Sans. It's not here. So just like before with Poppins, we have to add it. Click Add New Font. Go to Google Fonts. And over here, type in Work Sans. Select it. Continue. Done. Very quick. Select the text again. And now you will see Work Sans up here at the top. And we select that. Now we make a few changes here. I'll put this at 14. And I think for the weight, we're going to put that on medium. And the line height, 
I think I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to mess around with the line height in this case because it actually applies enough spacing between this already for me. The letter spacing, I'll increase to one. See how quickly we had done that. For our main heading, we grab some lorem ipsum from my generator. The generator, yeah, this is a good sentence. But I want it in all caps. I want to have it uppercase, which is a problem, right? Because we know that Brizzy currently cannot do that. So I'm going to go to Word. And I got a question. What did I do here? The first thing is I pasted in Word, which is Control Command V. The problem is it's taking the formatting from the website. So it looks gray because that's where we got it from over here. Control V, don't touch anything else on your keyboard. Then you press Control again, Command again, and it gives you that little pop-up box over here. And this will give you the paste options. And then I want to paste it without any formatting. So just the standard default as is in the Word. And then I press T on my keyboard and it gives me that. That's how I did that. I can do it again. Control A to select everything and delete. This is not a Word tutorial, but I got the question. Let's do it again. Control V, Control T. Right, Control V, Control 1, and then T. Then I select everything. Shift F3 will cycle through the capitalization of the text that you have selected. So Shift F3 gives me uppercase. If I press it again, it gives me lowercase. If I press it again, it gives me capitalization of the sentence. You see only the E, and then we want uppercase. That's how I went through it. I'm so used to doing this that I don't even think when I'm doing it. We go back to Brizzy, okay? Brizzy over here. I'll select the text, triple click, one, two, three, and then control V. Let's change it. First, I'll put it on white, then go T for typography. And this time I'll select the size of the text, put it on 40. Let's first change the font to work sans. And what I see is there's a few spaces here at the beginning and the end. So I'll just go ahead and delete that to make sure We've got our ducks in a row. Let's go back to T4 Typography, size 40. I'll put this on, let's try semi-bold. Nope, I think I'm gonna also put this on medium. And the line height, I'll just bring it down a tad to 1.6. This time, I'm going to go the opposite of adding more letter spacing by reducing it. And I'll go here to the down arrow and I'll put it on two. And for that, I think I'm going to reduce the line height to light. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Good. Click outside. Next, we select the line. Change the color to white. And over here, you see the size of the line. There's often a lot of stuff in Brizzy that appears here in the bottom very sneakily. Other page builders will have huge areas you can change this. Brizzy wants to really Make sure you can do everything in one area very quickly. So you will often miss out if you don't pay attention to the settings here in the bottom areas of a dialog box. To change the size, simply click in it. And you can see my cursor is now flashing next to the two. To increase it, I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. So up will give me more and I'll just let it go up to four. And then you wait one heartbeat and it will enter that value. Notice that the white here that I've applied doesn't seem the same white. And for some reason, the default setting within Brizzy for the line is set at transparency. So there's about 20% transparency applied. You can see the slider is over here. I'll just click and drag that all the way to the top, actually 70% opacity. And there's the line. To make changes now to the line size and location, I'll click here first on a line and now it's right left center right left center left we put it on left and now i'll click on it and you see the handles that appear on the left and the right just grab this handle and i'll drag it you also have more control if you want to put in the pixel value click here on the cog and you will see over here you can set it in percentage which it currently is 20 percent and or 20 pixels. And a quick note, the 20%, 20% of what? 
of the container it is in. So currently it's within this column, it's 20% of this column. And you can imagine you can add four more of these in there and that'll give you 100%. And that's our line, hmm, nice. Now we add a nice little bit of paragraph here for a big, big tagline, jumping around here, let's grab this. Okay, copy that, go back, triple click to select, Control Command V, and then we just change the color first, go to Topography, Work Sans, and I'm going to put this one, I'll leave it on 16 as well. Line height, I'll put on 1.7 like is, because this is paragraph, we want to read it, and the light, hmm, all of this is good, except I want it in, do I want it in uppercase? Yes, I do. So I'll copy it, quickly do my word trick, Control V, Control T, select all, and then shift F3, control copy, there we go, and we paste it again. Okay, but now it doesn't come in at all the settings we want, and it seems like there are some line breaks here and there, and this, my dear friends, is a problem in Brizzy, which is also going to be addressed in the next update of 2.3. So if you run into this issue, then you open it actually in Notepad. But I think it's going to be solved soon, so I'm not gonna go through all of that. Let's just make sure we've got everything set up, works on, good, and that's it. Next, our spacer. I'll add space here to my liking, or with the spacer selected, go to Settings, and I'll add it here. So let's just put it on 100 pixels. Select the button, click on it. Let's change the text, double-click button, and then Caps Lock. I'll type in view more. Then I will first align it. Click here on the alignment, right and left. You see, you can cycle through that, put it on the left. And then we can make changes to the button. Over here on the left, click on this little hand. Size, I think medium is good. Fill, uh, yeah, we want it filled. And then corner, let's give it rounded corners for this one. And then the border, just leave it. We will reduce it on this side. We can change the icon. So let's close this one out and then click on plus. And then we search arrow. And let's see what kind of arrows do we have. Mm, quite a number, actually. I like that one, but it's a round shaped. Let's see what other kinds. This one is cool. Let's choose this one. There we go. And you can place the arrow, of course, on either the left or the right, change its size, and this spacing adds the space between the ticks and the arrow. Set to 10, I think it's a good value. Let's go and make changes to the color. The background color, I'll drag one from here. So I use this one. Let's use one of these colors. Shall we go for a red? No, I think that's a little bit too much. But let's go for the yellow then. Copy, and then we go back. Background selected, remember button, color, and now we are on the background. I'll paste it here in the code. And there we go for the yellow. And you can see we've got a little border there that we need to get rid of. First, let's change the text because the white on the yellow, a little difficult to read, so better to go for black. So I'll choose this one here on the left. Actually, we can use this blue. That's what we should be doing. Let's copy the blue again. Paste it. Good, that looks better. Then border. I'm just going to grab this slider here on the right and reduce the opacity. And you'll see when we get to the bottom, the border is removed. No shadow. Next, we make changes to the hover state. By default, the hover is blue with white text. So what we'll do, Click here on this little hand. This gives us hover. Background, we're going to change that to the same yellow. So I'll just copy this yellow again. And then I'll just reduce the opacity a little bit here to around 80%. Give me 80, there we go. Now you see if I hover over it, it goes a little bit darker. And we'll put the text also on that blue color. Copy that. And let's see how it looks now. 
There we go, just slightly so that we know something is happening. All right, let's click outside, save our work, Control S, Command S. Let's go preview it. Click here on the preview button in the bottom right hand corner. I'll ask again, please give us a shortcut key for preview. In essence, things look good here. One of the nice things in Brizzy is that the developers and designers behind it has done a lot of work to make sure that if you just drop elements in, you don't really need to mess around with the spacing. So the spacing here is actually all good. So we don't need to make changes to that. What we'll do though is we'll cut a little bit more of this text to the left so that we have them a little bit more squashed and we will add padding to the top and the bottom of this page. Let's close the preview. Let's add the padding at the top, hover with your cursor here and I'll drag it to around 120. And then at the bottom, I'll do the same 150. Click, hold and drag, as simple as that. And if you need more control over the padding, you go to the settings, more settings of the block. Settings up here, more settings. And from the drawer here, you will see our padding applied at the top at 120 pixels and at the bottom, 150 pixels. You have all the control you need over here. Click outside to close the drawer. And now to squash this, I don't need to bring in padding within the column. This is what many people will do. You will go here to the column, follow along, settings, more settings. And then from the padding here on the right, I'm going to add padding inside the column. And you see, this is what I want to achieve. I want to just have this word break to the second line and three lines here. Give us a little bit more of a boxed thingy that we want to achieve there. But what did I tell you? We don't need to do that. We're going to do it much more easily. Click outside, we undo this, Control Command Z. And now we just hover over any of these two columns. And you will see inside, between them, there is a little handle here. And as you hover over it, the cursor changes to both sided arrow. Click and hold it. And you see at the top now, it gives you this heads up display 50% by 50%. And this tells you that the column on the left, you guessed it 50%, same as the one on the right. You can simply drag it like so and change the width of the column. And as you do it, you'll also see the percentage at the top changes. We're not going to be pixel perfect here. We're not going to care about that heads up display at the top. We only want to achieve that same thing that we did now, like so. And how simple is that? So I'm going to drop it here. And now I'm done. So I can update my work, then go and preview it on the front. And there we go. How easy was that, right? Simply grab the handle and drag it around. The last touch here is a shape divider and that is added to the block. Go to the block settings, more settings, and then dividers, you'll find it here at the bottom. You can add a divider to the top. So let's just show you how to do that. Click here on the type and scroll through the various kinds of shape dividers that are provided within Brizzy. These crazy ones, not sure when you'll use them, maybe on Halloween, otherwise try and stay away from the crazy ones. Let's go for a very simple one. This one at the top, you'll see like that, and you can make changes to it. We'll only apply it to the bottom for this one, so I will select none again. And then instead of the top divider, bottom divider type, and we choose this one and you see it's here in black. I'll increase the height of this divider with this slider here. Grab the slider and just drag it to the right to increase the height. You'll see it's set to pixels. You can also do percentage. And then for the color, instead of putting in a color here, I'm going to stay on black, but I'll reduce the opacity here on the right to give us an overlay effect. So around here to 20%, and it's a pity I cannot see that 20% because it's falling off my monitor. There we go. You see, 
So let's close it, click outside. And there we go. That was easy, right? Super easy. We can still, yeah, let's put that 130, looks better. Now we go into responsive design for our tablet and for our mobile. And you'll see, because we use this approach of the two columns, how super easy it's going to be to make the changes in terms of our designs for the tablet and the mobile. To find that sidebar on the left, hover over the desktop icon, and then select tablet first. Grab the handle in the middle of the two columns and drag it to the right. Only focus on this one, forget what happened here. Until you get it there. Now, because we have increased, let me see if I can see it. it's up display. We've increased this one. Let's put it, see if we can put it up there on 60, 18, 59.6. We've increased this column more than 50%. This column is 50%. What Brizzy does when you go into responsive design is it pushes the column to a next line. That is a really, really cool feature. In the beginning, you, you're going to wonder what happened here? Why, why is it there? How do I get it back? But what happens the moment we go into tablet design is that the second column also gets a handle. So all we need to do now is grab this handle and drag it until it is narrow enough to fit again next to this one on the tablet. And you can actually even make it narrower. It's not going to have an effect. So very, very, very nice. I really like this feature quite a lot within the tablet display. Then we go one more to mobile, sidebar on the left, select mobile. And now what's going on here? Now we have this over here, we have this over here. And by default, what happens in Brizzy is when we work with mobile display and design, it's going to stack the columns. And stacking means one column on top of each other. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. In most cases, this is the preferred way when designing for mobile. What we'll do here for mobile is just to make a few changes to especially how it looks in terms of, you know, the size of the text. So I'll click here on my main heading from the toolbar T4 Topography, and let's reduce this to around 30. See if that looks better. That's good. And then I think for our text here, it's at 16. Okay, so we can move this down to 14. That will be better. And let's see the top one. Also on 14, I think this is fine. And then over here, click on my spacer, reduce this a little bit. And my button, I'm going to keep my button as is. I'll add padding at the top. And here comes a question. What do we do with this one here at the bottom? Let's go have a look first at how this will display on the front end for a user. To do that, I will update, save my work, preview it. And then here, I will grab the URL, copy that and open my developer's app called Sizzy. We paste this previous one. And this is the one we're working with. On the desktop, two versions. This is normal HD, MacBook Air. We cannot complain. And as we scroll down to our tablet, mm, three lines, maybe we should try for two, but it, hey, come, it looks good. And same here, it looks good. But what I want you to pay attention to here, that's important, is that there isn't all the space there at the bottom than you would see here in the builder where we have this column. So you don't have to worry about the column. There's nothing in there, so we don't see anything in there. But if you want to add space at the bottom, you have to add that to the padding of the block. So go here to the block, it's currently at 25 pixels, and I'll just increase it to 75, a little bit, update, go to Sizzy, refresh, and you'll see we'll have more space here now at the bottom. There we go. This looks pretty good, pretty good. Uh, well, three lines. I don't like this little dude all by himself there, but I think fair enough. We can 
Uh, let's change it. Let's change it. Go here, topography. It's currently set to 30. Let's put in a 24. That should give us that update. Let me also just go to the tablet. Tablet, uh, we think three. Three are okay, we think. We think so. Let's go to Sizzy again. And reload all devices. Uh, yeah, okay. That looks good. Let's add an entrance animation for that button. Let's close the front end for this one. We won't need it again. And we apply that at the desktop level. Click on the button, go to settings, and then it will open up for us here on the right. Click on advanced and you go, 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 go down, entrance animation. I don't think this is advanced, but anyway, grouping is always an issue. From here, you have a mountain of options when it comes to how you want this button to enter. For example, we have ta-da, and show us ta-da. Okay, that's a little bit in your face, wobble. Okay, these guys are all very, I prefer something a little bit more subtle, like this fade in. So let's use fade in. And what we'll do is we'll put a delay there. I love a delay because a delay kind of draws the attention. Somebody opens the website and then after a second or two, the button only appears. So it draws their attention to that button. How, however, there is also a major problem with the delay. If you're on a cell phone device, people flick quicker through the display with their thumb. So if they get onto the page, they read less, they look for images, and they just flick through it. So that button that is gonna only appear after two seconds, by the time it appears, your user is already halfway down the page. So as much as I love the delay, I have to remind myself that someone on a mobile device may completely miss it because they're just going to be scrolling at the speed of light through the page. So just remember that. The delay here, it comes in after one second of loading and it takes the duration one second. Let's change this duration to two seconds, two to two seconds. And let's see, update. Go to Sizzy, reload the page and you will see the button is going to fade in and it's going to take two seconds in total. Well, well I didn't want to do that. Can I refresh here? I cannot refresh on this page. What is this one? Refresh. And there we go. Very nice, very nice, very nice. We can't complain. Good. Hey, how awesome was that? We built out this banner and everything I've showed you here, you can do in the free version of Brizzy. You don't even need the pro version for it. Now let's go and create that stunning image that I have showed you earlier. To do that, we're simply going to duplicate this block. And you can go up here to the block settings and select here duplicate. And now we have two. We want to add a little bit separation here in the middle so we can differentiate between the two. Click here on the plus and create your own. Brings us a third block. One, two, three. And we'll just leave this one on white. Let's add one here at the bottom as well. So we have this white space. Let's change the image for the block. Click on the block settings. Image over here, background. Select image. And then we bring in our image from our explorer or finder. There we go. Select it, select. And because we have already a background color, that color is now automatically converted to an overlay. And it may just be the kind of effect you're after. In our case, absolutely no. So let's go and remove the overlay first. From here, just go to the icon next to it, colors, select it, grab the opacity slider on the right and drag it to the bottom. So we can quickly talk about what's wrong with this hero banner, which is something you, you, you'll be surprised to find on many, many websites. You cannot read the text as simple as that. All of this gets lost. Now, remember, I'll always talk about the word legibility. How well we can read text is all about contrast. You can see these letters here 
on the back of the hair, we can read it very well because the hair is dark, the letters are light, we have contrast, and the more contrast we have, the better we can read it. So you will say, okay, these guys we cannot read, so we should switch it to a darker color, maybe black, but then we won't be able to read it over the hair in the back. The only solution we have here is to apply an overlay. And if we select this black here with the overlay still open, we reduce it, we can achieve this effect. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. We did it in episode one. It works perfectly. But we do lose a little bit of the impact of this photo, the beautiful skin tones. How can we preserve that? And the trick here is to use a gradient and then one part of the gradient is transparent and the other one is solid. Before I do that, I'm just going to put it again here on full transparency and change the color of the button. And in this case, I'm just going to grab a color from her skin, activate my color picker over here, click on that and copy that code, close it, click on the button, and then we go to the button color background, and I'll paste it here. And remember, also do the same for the hover. Now we have this V. Eh, don't mess with me. There we go. Okay, right. Super. Let's apply that gradient overlay. Block. Overlay. And under overlay, you will see this little drop down box within the color picker. It's set to solid, select it, and choose gradient. And up here, we have a bar that appears that we can add the gradients. This one is selected because there's a little white dot inside the circle. If I click on this one, the white dot jumps here. To know which one you're working with, you just look at the one that has the white dot in the middle. We're going to put both of them on black. So select this one, put it on black, and let's put it all the way to 100%, so it's solid. And then we go to the one on the right, also on black, and solid. And now you'll think, what's the purpose of this at all? Now let me show you the magic. With this one on the right selected, grab the opacity slider and drag it all the way to the bottom. Wow, you look professional. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder. We can do a little bit more here because you can see that the fade out zone happens here, so we still lose a little bit of this amazingness on the front of our face. This area here, okay. This area here, not okay. And to make this transition a little harder, go to the one here on the right, which is not transparent, click, hold, and drag it. And then you'll see the area changes. So we'll drag it all the way to the middle. And we can still read our text very well, but look how bright her face is now. And to really give it a nice little impact, I'm going to add another divider to the top, similar to the one at the bottom. I go to the block, settings, and then more settings. Go to styling, select the top one, choose the same divider, and then also click on color, and I'll reduce the opacity. This one I'll leave a little bit darker than the one at the bottom. Update. And I want to do something a little bit different now with the mobile display. Let's go have a look on tablet. It should look good, right? And then if I go to mobile, we have this on mobile. So it's not working very well on mobile. And I'm going to do something on mobile that I hardly ever do, and that is to bring in columns. In mobile, I said at the beginning, most of us prefer to do stacked designing, which means you have column on top of a column like these two. But because I want her face a little bit more exposed, I'll put my text here to the left. Grab the handle of this column and I'll drag it. And then I'll grab this one all the way down just to bring it next to it. And let's see if this will fit in. 
think we'll just drag it a little bit more like so. Good. Let me see our color, the overlay. Can I change it here? I doubt I can. I think it's going to affect it, but I'll try. Let's see if I go to the top. No, it didn't affect it. Good, 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 good. Update. I think we're done. Go to Sizzy. We reload all devices. And let's first have a look at MacBook Air. Inspect, inspect, inspect. This one, we already gave ourselves a medallion for it earlier. Let's see if the next one is worthy of praise. We scroll down and it is indeed very, very, very worthy. Ah, looks good. Hey, we need to add a link to the button. Okay, let's go back and check it out on an iPhone. Focus. Good. And you see, we squashed this all the way to the left by using the handle of the column. Very easily done. Didn't have to work with padding, none of that bull twang, and we got it easily fixed here. And it also looks very good here on a mobile display. What did I say? We need to add the link. Let's quickly do that just to make sure you know how to add a link to a button. In fact, I can quickly show you this. You can actually link any container or any text element or any image or any button on your page. So for example, this column, I can link the entire column if I want to, to a external link. You click here on the settings and you will see the link icon appears here. Same for the text. Click on the text element and you'll see the link icon appears here. The line, no, the line is not going to work like that. But the text, containers, images, and naturally a button is going to have that link icon. So we click on the link. There are four that you can choose from. And these two are pro versions. So because I'm using Brizzy Pro, I have the opportunity to add a pop-up as well as a file. We just focus on the URL, which is a big name for a website address, and we're going to link it to HTTPS, colon, forward slash, forward slash, W4B, which is websites for beginners.io, and we'll say open in new tab, and there we go. Simple like that. Update. And now if we go to Sizi and we refresh, and there we go. Just copy this and I click here on my view more. It's going to open up websites for beginners for me. Super duper. Ha ha ha. We're done. I, I enjoyed this. I love this kind of design. So easy. Just drag things around and it works. And it, it really is very satisfying when you can get to a design like this in such a short time. I make it sound easy, but if you follow along and you're new to this, you're going to get the hang of it sooner or later. My only advice to you is don't just sit and watch. Grab the free version of Brizzy. Get the free version of Local so you can practice it on your computer. And then just do what I do. Get some images from free stock sites like Pixabay and Pixels, etc. And practice along. It's the only way how you're going to get better at this. I've seen too many people who wait for a job. And then when the client comes along, they are completely not ready for it. And then in the end, they completely screw it up. Practice, 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 practice makes perfect. That's it from me, JP. Have a great day. Stay safe. See you in the next video.